There are many blessings that come with pregnancy, and for me, varicose veins is definitely one of them. I know some people have different symptoms for different pregnancies. This just happens to be my thing for this one. When I look at my daughter and think about the miracle of life and how amazing it is to have children, I remember that it's all worth it in the end. But in the meantime, while I'm growing the second baby, my varicose veins are quite painful and I have finally found a solution and I'm excited to share with you that today. This varicose vein cream is great for pregnancy varicose veins, but it's also good for any kind of muscle soreness or skin that just needs calming and soothing. The ingredients in this homemade cream are meant to reduce inflammation, reduce swelling, and to calm the skin. I experienced really painful varicose veins at the end of my first pregnancy, and then when I got my second pregnancy, which is now, they started right away, and I was like, if this is how it is at the beginning, what's gonna happen at the end? So I wanted to come up with something that I could put on my skin. I started looking at varicose vein creams or serums. They were all very expensive, and I noticed they all had a few common ingredients, such as arnica oil and calendula. And I already have both of those ingredients, so I decided to go ahead and just make my own. When you are pregnant and your blood volume is increasing so much, there's a lot of pressure on your blood vessels and veins, and sometimes that can cause a lot of pain and varicose veins to form. Doing things like staying really hydrated, staying active, wearing compression socks, eating a healthy diet, all of those will help any pregnancy symptom that you are experiencing. Compression socks are also great for varicose veins. When I am pregnant, or anytime really, but especially when I'm pregnant, I like to make all things myself that I can, like homemade lotion, homemade sunscreen, homemade soaps, because anything that you're putting on your skin is going in your body just as if you were eating it because your skin is the largest organ of your body. So I am very cautious about what I put on my skin, especially when I'm pregnant. So you can rest assured with this recipe that it is all natural and safe. Now I also have a homemade stretch mark cream if you're experiencing itchy, stretchy skin, which most pregnant women do. And I'll leave a link to that below, it's on the blog. And I wanna say a disclaimer, of course, I'm not a medical professional. If you have a serious problem with varicose veins that is unrelated to pregnancy, you wanna seek medical attention and make sure that you are fixing the root cause of that and make sure that this is the kind of thing that would be right for you. I have run this recipe by my midwife who has taken care of me for a couple years now. So I am comfortable that this works for me. So you would wanna do the same. Okay, so you're gonna create a double broiler. You've seen me do this a bunch of times on my YouTube channel before. Basically just a pot of, with some water in it, turn the heat on and put a large bowl on top. Quarter cup cocoa butter, quarter cup shea butter, two tablespoons each of coconut and jojoba oil. You're also going to add your two tablespoons of tallow balm here if you have it. Shea butter and cocoa butter have a lot of health benefits. They're known for their skin benefits. They relieve dry skin and reduce skin irritations. They contain anti-aging properties. They're also great in any kind of lotion form. I use them to help reduce stretch marks in pregnancy. They're a great all-purpose butter for homemade skin products. You can use all shea butter here or all cocoa butter. Tallow is very exciting. It's a new one for me to introduce in my homemade medicine cabinet this year. It is rendered fat, for those who don't know, in this case from cattle. The fat is called suet or sue, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it refers to the nutrient-dense fat that surrounds the cow's organs. And when you render the beef fat into tallow, it removes all the impurities, and what's left is a highly nutritious fat that can be used in cooking or absorbed into the skin via homemade skin products. I don't have enough beef bones on hand to make my own tallow, although I would have loved to. So you can find grass-fed tallow on Amazon, so I'll leave the link below to this one. Now, one thing I wanted to tell you while that is cooking is that whenever you make your own homemade products, if you make your own homemade products, you know this already, but if you're new to making homemade products, you should know that because they don't contain chemicals or additives or anything like that, like you might be used to from the store, there might be some troubleshooting you have to do with anything that you do homemade. Especially when you're using something like coconut oil and shea butter, any kind of butter, oil like that, is the fat solidifies at different temperatures. So if your house is 
super warm at 80 degrees, the mixture was more likely to be runny and watery. Whereas if it is cold in your house, the mixture will solidify and become harder. This is not a problem, it will work either way. But it's something to be aware of because you might feel like, what happened? Why is my mixture so hard and I can't even like dip my finger into it like I can most regular store-bought lotions. Or you might feel like my mixture is so runny, what happened? If your mixture is really runny, you can try putting it in the refrigerator, which is why I do that in the first place. It helps solidify it. Or maybe you just used too much of your oil. If your mixture is too hard, you might want to just warm it up. So if your house is not warm, when I have a, a, a mixture, if it's like in the winter time and it gets kind of hard, I don't have a problem with this. I really don't care. I actually just dip my fingers in it and then I rub it between my hands, which creates heat. And then you have a nice spreadable lotion. So you just get used to this kind of thing when you make your own products. They are not perfect. That's why store-bought products are so easy to use because they have those additives in them that create so that they don't have to be modified based on the temperature. Once that has melted, you're going to take the bowl off of the heat and give it a good stir. Then you're going to add the arnica oil and the calendula oil, two tablespoons of each. And you're also gonna add your essential oils here if you are using them. I'm gonna add lavender, frankincense, and helichrysum. Calendula has many health benefits, whether you're taking it internally or putting it on your skin, which also ends up being somewhat internal. But you often find calendula in skincare products because it's so calming and so good for the skin. And most importantly, it's an anti-inflammatory. So that is why it's nice for something like varicose veins because it's going to really calm that area cool it down and provide it with some nourishment so that it doesn't hurt as badly. Arnica is an herbal plant that is really good when it is in a gel or lotion form. It helps to decrease pain and reduce swelling in the skin. It is also natural anti-inflammatory. What I love about these ingredients is these are the kind of things that people used to use before we had medical creams or any kind of pharmaceutical drugs, these are effective. You just have to know where to find them and know how to make them. You're going to stir this up and then you're gonna place it in the fridge. I prefer to do this just because it expedites the gelling kind of process with this recipe. When you take it out of the fridge, you're going to whip it up with a hand mixer if you have one. This will give it that nice whipped consistency, make it very easy to spread. I love doing it this way personally. You don't have to, you could just leave this out of room temperature. It will eventually come together and harden just fine. It will take longer though, probably more like a day as opposed to a couple hours. When you're done with this, you just want to transfer it to a sealable jar. I have this little jar here with a lid and you don't need much. I just apply it right to the area of concern. So for me, it's my ankles and you should feel relief within the next few minutes. I love to put this on before bed after a long day when you feel like you've kind of been swollen a little bit. It just feels really good. This would also make a great gift for someone who's newly pregnant. I know I would have loved to have this early on in my pregnancy before I had thought of making it myself. I don't want pregnancy to stop me from doing the things I love, even if they are simple, just chores around the house, like hang drying cloth diapers and spending time outside with my daughter and our family. I was just out the other day enjoying our time outside with the chickens and the garden and just realizing how thankful I am for our health, even if being pregnant comes with some side effects such as painful varicose veins. Sometimes it's easy to say, oh, I'm pregnant or I have XYZ ailment, so I'm going to just sit down and wait for it to end. I've never been that person. I'm definitely someone who likes to be up and at them and I will push through pain most of the time, assuming it's not going to, of course, put me at risk. Having this cream really helps just ease that pain, especially when you know that you're not in a immediate danger. You just have a side effect from a beautiful process of pregnancy. So it makes me feel really good knowing that I have a natural solution to help remedy that even if it is not. Making the pain go away completely, it makes my life easier on a daily basis so I can enjoy these simple things. All right, well, thanks for joining me in this video on how to make your own varicose vein cream for pregnancy using Arnica and Calendula. If you're brand new to my page, please hit that subscribe button. Every week I post a new video on farm to table recipes and homemade natural living. Don't forget to stop by the blog, theduvalhomestead.com. I'll link it below for the printable recipe card for this so you can print it and save it for later. Thank you so much for stopping by the Duval Homestead.